Hello, my name is Neto Rosatelli and welcome to the Cataract Surgery Channel. This commented surgery shows a very small pupil and loose zonules hard cataract case. Three major challenges together, a combination that seems to be a favorite combo at the Mac Cataract Store food menu. The case was approached by using the BHEX pupil expander in a bimanual insertion technique that allows for easier and atraumatic pupil engagement in these very small pupils without resorting to pupil stretching, followed by phaco emulsification and IOL lyris fixation, making this a very interesting and informative video depicting some techniques and strategy choices. We can see that it is a very small pupil and a fairly dense nucleus, and as I decided to try phaco emulsification to preserve the advantage of a small incision, a pupil expansion device is the smart choice, and I go for the BHEX in this case. The BHEX is very thin and flexible, needing no inserting devices or injectors, being able to be inserted in the anterior chamber in one smooth movement using a 23 gauge forceps through incisions as small as 1.5 mm. Under 4.5 mm pupils are usually stretched to allow for easier insertion of the BHEX. But here I decide to use a second instrument to help, a Kuglan hook. The first flange at 6 o'clock is easily engaged, but we can anticipate that the others will be more difficult because the pupil is really small. Next will be the 10 o'clock flange, the forceps going from the opposite side and this wonderfully petite Kuglan hook then pulls the iris and in a beautifully coordinated maneuver, the flange is again easily engaged. Info on the BHEX is found at the Matte Invent Devices site, link on the description below. The remaining flange is approached in a mirror-like fashion, and I think that this is a very handy and elegant way of engaging the BHEX flanges. I can't wait to send this video to my friend Suvend Bhattacharji, inventor of the BHEX, showing this technique of easy and atraumatic engagement of the BHEX in very small pupils without stretching. The BHEX really is a wonderful device, very unobtrusive and satisfying to use. What a beautiful hexagon! This Inamura forceps has 2.5 and 5 mm engraved markings, and being that a dense nucleus on a zonular laxi afflicted bag, I go for a bigger hexis. Size at 6 mm or more, one can notice that the capsule is somewhat fibrotic, and by the bag's behavior, I am under no hope to achieve an in the bag implantation or even manage to preserve the bag. My goal is to succeed in fake emulsifying the nucleus and manage to preserve the small incision with all its advantages. Good hydrodissection is very important here because I assume it will be very difficult to rotate and loosen the nucleus due to the zonular laxity and also to release the cortex which can be challenging to detach from the capsule in these cases, often leading to more zonular dialysis. Indeed, the bag is too loose to attempt nucleus rotation. If attempted, it will damage the remaining zonules. A first crack is achieved and it's clear that the nucleus rotation is impossible without zonular damage. 
A transverse chop is made to liberate a fragment without rotating the nucleus, and I begin nucleus disassembly. I am sure now this is a lost bag, and I hope to succeed in getting all the nucleus without dropping something. Patience and care are the way to go here. As a whole nucleus quadrant has been emulsified, its vacant space provides ease and better visualization. I prolapse this big piece half out of the bag and proceed by chopping and emulsifying it in the safe zone, avoiding working inside the bag. The rest of the nucleus is approached the same way, by engaging and releasing the pieces from the capsular bag and carefully emulsifying them. The pieces must be chopped down to a small enough size to be able to rotate and safely be emulsified. At the same time I keep an eye on the bag, because it is practically completely detached now, but no vitreous is coming. I am confident to proceed this way now because it is evident that the anterior hyaloid is intact and no nucleus fragments will fall into the vitreous cavity, else vitreous would have presented by now. The BHEX provides extraordinary safety, allowing me to work these big nucleus pieces without risk of iris damage. The bag is aspirated among the remaining nucleus fragment, and I check to see if there is anything hidden in Burger's space. OVD is injected before withdrawing the FACO probe to prevent anterior hyaloid rupture. I then proceed to remove the BHEX ring, which has performed its task wonderfully and unobtrusively, and is not needed anymore. I am able to disengage the device from the pupil with one grasp, and removal through the incision is very straightforward. The presence of an intact hyaloid is a great positive thing in this case, and I opt to do an IOL iris fixation procedure in order to preserve it. Other techniques such Yamanis or other scleral fixation techniques would inevitably invade vitreous space. The ideal IOL for this technique is a three-piece hydrophobic acrylic one, and an AR40 is chosen. Now, careful injection is performed to place the IOL's leading haptic over the iris in the anterior chamber. The trailing haptic is maneuvered through the pupil sliding along the posterior iris face to safely land in the sulcus without damaging the anterior hyaloid. No space for errors here. I then, in an analog fashion, using the BHEX microforceps, ensure the second haptic positioning in the sulcus, maintaining the optic captured by the pupil. The haptic was entrapped in a few iris fibers and a small bleeding occurs, but the IOL is perfectly placed for fixation now. I check sulcus positioning by gently forcing down the IOL 
and I'm rewarded that it does not move. I immediately pressurize the anterior chamber with OVD and proceed to wash and aspirate the bleeding before it coagulates and hamper visualization of the intended fixation site. Yes, things are looking great. Despite being a 2.8 mm incision and able to be sealed with hydration, it is much better to suture it, ensuring a stable anterior chamber during the fixation process. Tano nylon is used, a simple X matter suture does it. Now for the iris fixation. The IOL already is at the intended position. Fixation sutures will be placed at 3 and 9 o'clock. I'm passing a 10 o proline with a straight needle, going from limbus to limbus and engaging the haptic from behind a moderate iris bite in its mid periphery. By tenting up the iris, I check if the bite is adequate and proceed to exit at the limbus, a cuggling hook helping to stabilize the eye. These placement landmarks are very important to ensure good IOL centration and a round and functional pupil. Care is taken when retrieving the needle in maintaining it at the iris plane to prevent iris damage. The straight needle is somewhat clumsy but easier to pierce the cornea than the conical curved kind and I prefer it. A paracentesis is done right over the suture path. The suture will be tied through it. The cuggling hook positions a loop of the distal suture to facilitate retrieval through the paracentesis. The distal loop is retrieved and cut to size. Care is taken to hold the proximal end with a forceps to prevent inadvertently pulling it. Now the proximal end is retrieved in a similar fashion, both suture ends exiting at the paracentesis. This tiny cuglin is really the ideal instrument for this technique, better than the usual iris hook that is used. Now comes an important detail, I untangle and neatly arrange the ends each to its proper side. The proline is wiry and unyielding and the knot must be tightened, clean and untwisted. I make the second throw square but do not cinch it yet, else it will make the first throw slip and the suture will be too tight. The third throw is made square and now I cinch the knot. One more throw is passed and cinch it tight. The suture ends are trimmed one millimeter long. These suturing details are important to be followed. 
else incorrect Iris future tension will ensue. The knot is released from the paracentesis and I evaluate the suture to be a good one, mid-periphery with enough iris tissue in compasset and not too tight. Perfect. The opposite suture is passed in a similar fashion. I think that a 2 mm iris bite is ideal in this technique. The needle is retrieved and in this case I already cut the suture to length. The paracentesis is made again directly over the suture path. The Kuglin hook again goes to action positioning and retrieving the distal suture end while the forceps holds the proximal end in place. Excellent teamwork! The proximal end is retrieved and suture ends are neatly arranged to make the knot. Same thing, first throw is made and tightened to an adequate size loop. Second throw square to it and only slightly opposed. The third throw is passed and cinched. As the haptics are firmly supported at the sulcus, the iris suture in here will ensure that the IOL stays in place until they are buried and incorporated into the sulcus itself, which happens after a few weeks. That said, there is no fear of IOL dislocation when the proline decomposes with time. So, correct sulcus placement of the haptics is essential to achieve perfect IOL centration. One more throw for good measure and I'm done. Ends are cut to 1 mm. No need of a peripheral iridectomy here. The needle passage is open small holes in the iris that act as little iridectomies. Time for an eye wash here. The IOL is positioned back and I also evaluate this to be a good suture and I can't help but smile behind my four-layered mask. No matter how many of these you make, it is always rewarding when you finish the hard part. A lot of evaluation, judgment and decisions are made here. The Kuglin hook is used to gently release the IOL optic capture and we immediately see that things look great. The pupil is round, the suture bites are excellent and IOL positioning is ok. OVD evacuation is performed, including in the burger's space, with care to maintain the anterior hyaline intact. 
This is important because the aqueous vitreous barrier will therefore be maintained. I apologize for the long video, but I edited out only idle segments to be able to show all the steps performed in detail as detailed videos of this technique are scarce in the web. Here I am irrigating the burger's space from one side and aspirating from the other, a very effective technique. Incision's hydration is performed and an outstanding result is achieved. I hope this video helps and encourages you to perform this excellent and low invasive technique of IOL fixation, a favorite of mine. Search Neto Rosatelli on YouTube or click on the link below and visit my other channel with cataract faco clips. Please like, share, subscribe and turn notifications on so you don't miss future videos. Thank you for watching.